watch him online going through the greatest storm of their lives. Just in case somebody over in Louisiana has a little power to tune into a service. I wish they could hear a roar of praise in this building. here in the building and online. You may be seated. I do, I do want to, oh, I've got a, a lot to jump through this morning. I, I'm going to have to jump fast. And I'm not a real big jumper. You know, I did turn down a pro basketball career. Teasing. Teasing. We are so happy to have uh, Ryan and Kirsten with us here today. Amen. Right back here. God bless you. Meeting the consulate, trying to get a reset on the visas. Thank you for being here. Part of us, part of us, and remember them in your support. Headed to Spain, and I, I believe God will help them greatly. Small groups, small groups, as such as they are, cranking up again. There was something in your chairs. There's online sign up if you need any information. Be sure to go to the website, First Church Small Groups. Ask on the Facebook family. We can answer those questions. We are better together. Look at your neighbor and say, we really are. We really are. Amen. Uh, one of our great soldiers of the cross, Brother L.L. L. Stevens, a member of this church, his family, the Elliott family, uh, part of this church. Brother Stevens has gone home to his great reward. Uh, we honored he and his brother and his brother-in-law a few years ago for 200 years of ministry between those three men. Tremendous patriarch in this area. The viewing will be down in Lake Jackson tonight. And then tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock here in this building, there will be a memorial service for Brother Stevens. And burial follow back down to Lake Jackson. Please remember that family. Can you say amen to that? Look at your neighbor and say, disaster. Okay, here we go. Uh, the church has been busy the last few days trying to minister to the needs of people. How many of you have ever been through a storm? Would you just wave your hand? Anybody remember Harvey? Ike? Rita? Katrina? Carla? Uh, okay, anyway, just going back a ways there. The great storm of 1900, anybody? And, uh, but... Uh, we know what it's like to be through a storm, and I want to thank everybody that's already been working so faithfully. Brother Larry Williamson, out of this church, Reach Out America. We've already got, I think, five trucks on the road headed to Lake Charles and uh, to start a distribution there. I believe they'll be there Tuesday night, and we thank God. Put your hands together for Reach Out America. Amen. Amen. And the Kings and the Busties and everybody that helps with that. Speaking of Brother Bussy, he's already made, I think, two trips over to Louisiana, brought some generator light towers that were donated. They're at the campground Tioga. This church purchased a 350 kilowatt, 1600 amp generator that is going to light up the campgrounds or a part of the campgrounds up there where evacuees are staying. So give yourself a hand for that. Amen. Amen. And then over in the event center, we've got a bunch of small generators. Got a couple of more light towers, generators that this church has bought. These things we have bought as a church family to let people over there know that we care. And we're going to have prayer for our brothers and sisters in the Golden Triangle on this side. Of, since we're in Texas, I'll say the Sabine. And then on the other side of the Sabine. For those in Louisiana, we're going to say a prayer for all of them. Is that good? Okay. Okay. Let me tell you a few things that we are going to need. We're going to need all the cash your neighbor has. Tell them that right now. Would you do that? And um, we're going to need that. And um, if you want to help with the generators and stuff we've already done, you can do that at First Church. If you want to help with Reach Out America, what we're doing through there, reachoutamerica.org. We need volunteers. We need manpower, woman power. We'll take child labor. We'll take anything you're willing to offer. A lot for the distribution center in Lake Charles. Also Moss Bluff for the Jared Pugh. Uh, they're serving 2,500 meals a day. They need help. They need food. They need cooks. How's that? You might want to participate. 
why don't you why don't you donate your husband to the cause, ladies, and uh, and help out, Amen. And there's some people that are in desperate need over there, and we want to be a part of it. I'm I'm making light of it, and I shouldn't. It's serious, and you know how serious it is. We've got homes destroyed, no power, no water. We've got people that are desperate, and they need the help of the Almighty God. Amen. I want you to stand right now. And those of you that are watching online, uh, here's the instructions to give. Those of you in the audience that give digitally, you can do it this way. The rest of you, as you leave the door, or if you want to donate your firstborn male son or something to the cause, you know, just lay them on the altar, I guess. I don't know. But here's what I do know. That he is Jehovah Jireh. And he will make a way. And he will provide for the needs of every family that is going through the greatest storm of their lives. Can I get a witness to that? Do you know that's the case? We're standing in a building, four and a half million dollars of damage to this complex during Hurricane Ike. But God brought us back together again. God brought many families that were scattered all across the United States after Ike back to the fold. And we believe God's going to do that for our brothers and sisters of Golden Triangle and in Louisiana. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord. East is that way. Would you just push a hand that direction right now? Father, I thank you, O Savior. I thank you, O Lord. You are the God of all the earth. You're the one that said you would go before us, come behind us, Lord, that you'd never leave us, never forsake us, God. We're praying the blessings of God upon our brothers and sisters in Golden Triangle and throughout the state of Louisiana, Lord. Even in the midst of this mess, reveal a yes. Work something good in the midst of all of this, God. Uh, Bring them back. Bring them back stronger. Bring them back wiser. Bring them back more blessed than what they were when they went into this storm. Uh, We believe you save your best work for last. uh, That you move from darkness into light. Uh, We pray the blessings of the Almighty God upon all of our brothers and sisters and everyone in these areas. Uh, And we give you praise and ask all of these things. In the mighty name of Jesus, would you lift your faces to heaven? Let's worship him together. God bless you. Thank you for being a Thank you. 
Just breathe in his breath right now. Let him speak life right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
chapter of the book of Acts found more in the book of Acts than any other book of the Bible, all. To be the first church is to give all, declare all, love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and say, God, I just give you all. Uh, without reservation, would you just do that a moment from the deep of my heart, Lord? I just want to thank you, God. I want to give you all of my life, all of my heart. All of my soul, all of my everything, oh God, I give you praise, oh Lord. I give you praise in this place. What a beautiful time to be together and to know that God is in our midst and to know that God is doing something special. He does his best work when the times look the darkest. And when the goings get going gets rough and tough, he shows up very, very well. Amen. Looking forward to a meaningful week around the church. First Wednesday, this Wednesday night. Don't forget that. Next Sunday. Everybody say next Sunday. Oh, children's ministry starts back next Sunday. Next Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. We were concerned when we saw some of your children out on eBay. And Facebook Marketplace. And we got very concerned. We figured we had to do something. We're figuring out a way. Our wave team is working hard. Probably will be, I, at last I heard it may have changed, but in the event center. We're going to have a lot of room to spread out. And uh, we're going to do something special. So we'll give you more details during the week. 
So good to have my brother here, my oldest brother, the best pastor of the two of us, Brother Mike Gurley, pastors outside of Olympia, Washington. Hey, big brother. You may be seated. We don't paint silver lining on dark clouds. That's not our job. We don't tell stories of how we had it as bad or worse than other people. We just want to connect with everybody that's hurting here today, everybody that's watching. Do we have some Louisiana folks in the house? Did I hear we had some? Oh, my Louisiana clan right over here. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Our prayers for you. We just simply want to connect with everybody that's displaced and hurting and say, God's going to do something special in the midst of this. I chose, I, I've spoken to families who have had children in the last six months, and I've told them this, that during this season and during this great upheaval, some of the children that are marked for the greatest of destiny are born in such a time as this. I just believe miracles begin to unfold at an accelerated pace in the season that we're living in. Because you do know that we're sin abound, grace doth much more abound. And you do know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord is going to outdo the enemy. And he's going to show up stronger. Amen? Amen. One day, someday, everybody's going to breathe a sigh of relief and pandemic's going to be over and Laura will be in the history books. And someday we're going to shout with the voice of triumph. And someday we're going to say, God, I saw you at work in the midst of all that. And I realized what you were doing. Why wait for someday? Why not make someday today by faith? Uh, and let's appropriate it into our now, now faith is... Uh, and say, God, you're going to make a way. This Today, I want to borrow a question from the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 12. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? How you going to do when the Jordan floods? I borrow a scripture from Jeremiah, but I borrow a title from Mahalia Jackson when she sang, my soul looks back and wonders how I got over. I want to talk to you about getting over today. I want to talk to you about getting out of the shadows and stepping into the light. I want to talk to you about exiting caves of fear and misery and standing out into the plateaus and vistas uh, that my God can make a way out of no way and he can do the impossible. Uh, in the, If you believe that, can we just take a little time out? to praise the God who can make things happen uh, and say, God, you're making a way out of no way. You're going to survive. We're going to survive this. We're going to thrive uh, in the middle of it. It was a peaceful, tranquil day when my wife and I visited the snow melt of Mount Hermon near Caesarea Philippi. The day was hot. The water was cold and clear, and you could walk across limestone rocks between tiny falls. Others did it, so we did it too. Now, normally that is a great prescription for a disaster. Others did it, so we did it too. But that day we followed the herd, and we're happy that we followed the herd. Do you have a herd that you follow? Do you have a good herd that you follow? Amen. So we did what others were doing. We took off our shoes. We sat on the rocky shore and we soaked our feet in the cold water. It was a tranquil scene. It's hard to realize how deceptive it was that the water from that serene pool would soon become a river. And from the place where we were for thousands of years, the Jordan River has begun its short, mysterious journey, not through a single sea, but through two seas. Uh, there's something about a river that fascinates us. From the first river river that exited Eden to water the earth, to the Rhine in Europe, to Amazon in South America, to the Mississippi in uh, North America, to the Ganges in India, to the Nile in Africa. Rivers uh, fascinate us, uh, but no river captures a believer's attention like the Jordan. Neither has there been any other river so emblematic of life and faith 
and truth uh, and hope. Uh, as I said, it begins in the snow melt of Mount Hermon in Lebanon. It flows south into and under the Sea of Galilee. It follows a treacherous, circuitous, winding course until it reaches the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, already 1,400 feet below sea level at its surface, and it continues to drop by three feet every year. The Jordan is one of the shortest rivers in the world, only about 200 miles long. But to be sm so small like some of you, it packs a pretty good wallop. Uh, don't mess with the small people in this church. You may have them by a few inches, but don't mess with them. We got some rough and tough small people uh, in this church. Uh, oh, my you may be sitting next to one of them. You better nod your head right now or they're going to show you. I'm not here to give you a geography lesson except to say that that was the river between bondage and freedom. And that line was the river between the second best or living your optimal blessed life in the land of promise. On one side of that river, desert. On the other side of that river, a land flowing with milk and honey. On one side of that river, dust. But on the other side of that river, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive and honey. You see that river form the line of demarcation for those that said, I'm leaving Egypt behind and I'm stepping into what God has for me in my today. And I'm seeing what God has. I say, let us pass over. Let us pass over in to a place of blessing. I'm not here to give you a ge geography lesson. I'm here to give you a theology lesson. That what God calls into existence it shall be. That you're going to make it through this season of life. 2020 was inspected by God in eternity past. And 2020, God looked at it and said... I'm going to do my best work when the world says it's at the worst. Uh, folks, I'm trying today to tell you this is the greatest day uh, of your entire life. Uh, you say, Brother Gurley, I don't believe that. Then you hadn't looked back uh, to when you were dead in trespasses uh, and sin uh, until you look back uh, and say, look where the Lord uh, has brought me from. I'm not here to give you a history lesson. I'm here to give you a theology lesson. Although a lot happened at the Jordan River. That's where Lot chose to look at the well-watered plains of Jordan. That's where the book of Numbers uses the Jordan again and again to form the boundaries of the tribes. The Jordan is where Naaman dipped seven times and leprosy flowed downstream. The Jordan is what revealed the people of God when they had to pronounce shibboleth uh, when they crossed uh, over. Because the Jordan is going to reveal whose side you are on. Moses gazed across the Jordan but couldn't go across. One of the highest peaks found in the Old Testament, uh, one of the pinnacles uh, of Israel's existence uh, was the day they crossed over Jordan. Uh, over 400 years uh, in slavery. But they said, we are stepping out by faith uh, and moving into a land of our forefathers uh, and we're claiming it as our own. Uh, it was John the Baptist that baptized people in Jordan. Uh, it was Jesus that was baptized uh, at Jordan uh, and performed miracles up and down its banks. Uh, I'm not here to give you a geography lesson. I'm not here to give you a history lesson. But crossing Jordan is perhaps one of the greatest spiritual metaphors uh, you will ever find uh, in uh, the book of the Bible, in the books of the Old Testament. Uh, and crossing Jordan, uh, when you look at our nation's history, 
it became a spiritual metaphor for the oppressed of America because Jordan to the oppressed was the Mason-Dixon line separating bondage and freedom. Jordan was emblem and symbol and code phrase for overcoming and living it free. And if there was ever a day that we need to embrace a spirit of liberty from oppression is the day that we're living in. I want somebody to cross over. How? I got over. I, I, I won't pretend the opposition is great. Anybody that decides I'm going to go to Gilgal, the place of rolling away. Anybody that says I'm going to cross over into my victory, into my miracles, into my destiny. You're going to face some stiff opposition. There are some big time opponents coming against you. Now, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. There's not one person in this building that is your enemy. We love one another. I'm telling you what, if we weren't in pandemic season, I'd be singing makes us love one another, not have you slobbering all over each other. Some of you introverts are saying pandemic is a blessing. The opposition is great. When you and I get ready to cross over, we're going to face some tough enemies. Uh, Jeremiah was troubled. Bad times had come against Jerusalem. And Jeremiah had one question. He said, I want to know, why do the wicked prosper? I want to know that. I mean, why did the casino survive and the church get destroyed? That's what I want to know. Why is the criminal running from the law? Why did he survive COVID? And we're burying missionaries and ministers from it. Why do the plans of the enemy seem to triumph and bad things happen to good people? I want to know why those who don't pay their tithes, their homes survived. I, I want to know why after I've been faithful to God, my whole life is turned upside down. Jeremiah said, God, why? Why are them no good, lousy? Those people that rip labels off of mattresses. I mean, those evil people. Why, why do the wicked prosper? I'm not going to go down to the preacher's hall of fame for what I'm about to say right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyhow. You ready? God has an infuriating habit that when you ask him a question, he's going to ask you a question. Job asked one question and God asked Job 42 questions. Far better than trust. <laughs> okay, God, we'll understand it better by and by. Because sometimes he has this. You know, when the Pharisees and scribes would ask Jesus a question, he'd say, let me ask you a question. Yeah, are we doing good? He's got this way about him. So Jeremiah says, God, I want to know. I want to know why the wicked are prospering. Why has everyone else won the blessing lottery? And your people get marginalized. What's the deal, God? The greatest heathen on my street have a generac generator powering their house. And all the rest of us, our swimming pools look like the creatures from the Black Lagoon coming up out of it. Uh, what's going on, God? What's going on, God? Well, God finally answered Jeremiah. He said, hey, Jeremiah, if you've been jogging with the footman, and you've got a little fatigued, how are you going to keep up with the cavalry when they start galloping past you? And, and by the way, Jeremiah, if you couldn't live for me in a land of peace without saying, oh, I'm so tired, how are you going to do when I cause the banks of the river Jordan, you know, the Brazos here in Houston, when it overflows, it can get 13 miles. During Harvey, it got 13 miles wide. What you going to do, Jeremiah, 
when I swell the banks of the Jordan River to a consume? How are you going to make it? God is saying, why are you asking me about the wicked prospering? What I'm asking you is you couldn't overcome in good times. How are you going to overcome in bad times? As I said, God has an infuriating habit that when you ask him questions, he will ask you the questions you don't want to hear. The opposition came against the children of Israel. You remember that? They were at Kadesh Barnea. They were thinking about crossing Jordan. They were thinking about crossing over. And the report came back, giants. Heap big them giants. Big, bad giants. Notice the plurality, giants. Not one. Giants. Opposition is great. To cross Jordan, you're not going to float your way on a pink swan that you get down at the swimming pool supply over to victory. You're going to fight some alligators, alligators, and crocodiles. You're, you're going to fight some big bad creatures uh, of the night. You're going to fight your way over Jordan. Uh, if you cross over... How you going to get over? You're not going to get over floating. You're going to get over fighting. Uh, but it's a good fight. You're going to have to roll up your sleeves. Uh, and say, God, you brought me this far by faith. Uh, I'm going to make it uh, to the other side. Uh, I'm going to do well. I'm going to get over. I'm going to cross over. The writer of Hebrews said, don't you dare be like those people that turned back. They saw the giants and they shook in their boots. Uh, that's the girly translation. Fast forward a few centuries when a man after God's own heart faith off with some of the remnants of those old giants. He slew one of them. David slew God. Goliath, perfect love, cast out fear. The man after God's own heart slew the enemy that caused all of Israel to fear. Did you hear me? Perfect love, cast out fear. Then comes David's nephew, Abishai. David's nephew, Abishai, his name means I'm smaller than everybody else. But he squares off against a giant named Ishbabinah, which means I dwell in the heights. I'm bigger than anybody else. And Abishai slew Ishbabinah because humility will overthrow pride any day of the week. Are you with me? I'm talking about opposition. Then came Sivakai which means revelation, faces a giant named Saph or Scythi, which means hypocrisy and two-facedness uh, because revelation will crumble hypocrisy. And then Elhanan comes along. His name means graciousness and he faces Lami. A giant means selfishness uh, and graciousness trumps selfishness. And that word trumps, that has no political connotation whatsoever right there. And because God's grace can try up over man's designs any day of the week. And then along comes Jonathan, the gift of God. He faces off against an unnamed giant. All we know about this giant he had two hands, two feet. And on each hand, he had six fingers. And on each foot, he had six toes. Four appendages, six digits on each. Four is the number of the world. Six is the number of man. You are looking at the spirit of the age of the last day. And God gave a gift in the form of Jonathan that came up against the spirit of the age and conquered it. That's why I don't lose heart with what we're facing today. I don't lose heart with what's going on because my God can help us overcome. I'm just trying today to tell you, though you face opposition, others made it over. And God is no respecter of Persons. I don't want a reaction from the audience to what I'm about to say. No reaction whatsoever. Straight face. You ready? Look at me like the first church of the frigid air. Just look at me very cool, calm, and collected. You ready? School starts tomorrow.
They're going to take a roll. For those who are attending virtually and those who are in live class, they're going to take a roll. Could I take a roll here today? I don't want to count the fearful and the unbelieving. I want to count the warriors of faith. I want, I want to go through Hebrews 11 and look at Enoch and Noah. They made it. Abel made it. Sarah made it. Abraham made it. Isaac made it. Joseph made it. They made it. Moses made it. The judges made it. The prophets mentioned there made it. The martyrs made it. And I hear him say, and the same day when the evening come, Jesus said, let's pass over to the other side. You know what that tells me? You're going to make it too. Let us pass over to the other side. In other words, when you go through a storm, you're not alone. When you passed over Galilee and the subterranean or the, the river of Jordan flowing beneath it, uh, you're not alone. Jesus is in your boat. You're his kid. You're going to make it. You've got him on the inside of your life. Every other ship may sink. Yours not gonna, yours not gonna sink, uh, because he's in your life. Uh, he's at work in you, through you, for you. Uh, do you know God loves you? Uh, he is for you. Uh, he's already put a check beside your name saying, I'm for you. Uh, let's do a roll call of those that God are for in this building. Uh, God is for you and 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 you out there. God is for you. Uh, he's going to fight for. Oh, oh, but Brother Gurley, I, I'm just not worthy. We used to sing that song. Unworthy. Unworthy. I'm a worm. I'm a slob in bondage and alone. I added some words there. You need to know who you are. In fact, go home and read Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2 tonight. Because Ephesians tells me I'm a saint. I'm called faithful. I have the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got peace from the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I've been chosen in him. There's a checkbox. Before the foundation of the world. I'm made holy. I'm made blameless. I'm loved. I've been adopted. I will not leave you comfortless. That means orphanless. I will come to you. Uh, I'm accepted. I'm redeemed. I'm forgiven. I'm in the will. I got an inheritance. Uh, I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, I've been raised together with you uh, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, I've been made to sit there and to dwell there. I am his workmanship, his masterpiece. Uh, I am created to do good work. I've been foreordained to walk in good works. Are you with me right now? You're not junk. I said you're not junk. You are not trash. You are the treasure and the diadem and the gems and the diamonds of our Lord Jesus Christ. Musicians come and give these people some hope. His name is Martunis, seven-year-old Indonesian boy. He made it over. He was playing soccer with his friends on December 26, 2004, when the earth shook and a tsunami followed. And his mother and sister would join the 230,000 killed in that one tsunami, swept up in a wave of water. He clung to a sofa floating for survival for days. He ended up on a forsaken beach. He lived there for 21 days on the beach, drinking water from puddles of water, eating noodles, eating anything he could find, clinging to the shore, until a group of journalists finally found him wandering on the beach. He was wearing a soccer shirt from a Portuguese team. And when he was found, his photo went round the world. And the star of that Soccer team, Cristiano Ronaldo, saw the photo, flew to Indonesia. He and his team members raised tens of thousands of euros to rebuild, rebuild his home, to provide for him, to pay for his school. Martunis kept playing soccer, what the rest of the world calls football. And 11 years later, 
the Lisbon, Portugal team signed its newest player, the boy who overcame opposition with the help of others. How I got over. I got over with the help of some friends. I got over with the help of faithful children of God. I got over with a nail-scarred hand that took me and he parted the waters in before me and he led me to the other side. I got over because I refused to be defined by my storm. I chose to be refined by it. I got over. I got over. You say, Pastor, I can't get over this. And and indeed, there are some things you can't get over. But what you can't get over, you can get through. And God will lead you through. So when you see the storm winds come and howl and hear the lightning and thunder roll, and the earth shakes and the oceans rise, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they'll not overflow thee. You're going to get over this, folks. You're going to get over it. You say, Brother Gurley, I'm coping with the loss of a loved one. Then you'll get through it. I'm coping with the loss of losing everything I had. You'll get through it. Because God did not just part the Red Sea. How wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? I'm serving the God that when my strength is not what it should be and I have nothing but a whisper of hope calling me to the other side that he is the one that can part the waters of my tribulation, my affliction, my problem and my situation I'm going through. We're about to have a testimony service in this building. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you to stand and testify and I'm not going to pass the mic around because I don't want to hear things like, well, the devil's been on my case all week. I don't want to hear that. Oh, Brother Gurley, I'm just, I'm just laying at death's door. I'm just praying the Lord will pull me through. Maybe he will. And I don't want to hear that. But if you've got a testimony, you say, in the darkest hour of my life, when people have pronounced judgment and the naysayer said he's down, he's out. There was a tender hand that parted my Jordan and led me to the other side. He got me over. Do you want to testify of that all over this place? Would you like to just stand and just start giving God praise in this house? Glory on my high. I believe it, oh Lord. I believe it, oh God. I believe it right now, Lord. You're in this house and you're in this place, God. Mm. 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 What are you waiting for, folks? What are you waiting for? It's time to cross over. What are you waiting for? It's time to get on through. Uh, it's time to put one foot in front of another uh, and say, Giants, you're, you're not going to defeat me. Uh, oppression, you're not going to stop me. Uh, opposition, uh, you've come in like a flood, but God's going to get me through this uh, and over this and beyond this. Uh, God's going to make a way uh, in the midst of this difficulty. Uh, he's going to resolve this in my favor. Uh, if you're near your family, would you start praying one for another? Uh, if you feel comfortable, will do it so find yourself a place to pray uh, and let the Holy Ghost uh, let it begin to rise up in you and say this is my day uh, and this is my hour uh, I, I'm going to dry the tears I may cry some more uh, but for this moment and this hour of the day uh, I'm going to wipe my tears uh, and I'm going to lift my hands to the Lord uh, and say God you did it for them uh, You'll do it for me. Uh, others made it. Uh, I can make it too. Uh, others got through. Uh, I can get through this. Uh, oh, come on, saints. Let me hear your roar in this building. Uh, let's pray right now. Oh, in the mighty name of the Lord. I claim it, oh God. I'm going to see.
of Louisiana over here, those that are watching online, I just wish you just extend a hand toward them right now. We know where they're at. We've been there. Would you just lift your voice, church? Uh, come on. Let's pray aloud and loud. Father, I'm declaring blessing, oh God. Don't know why, Lord. All I need to know is there is a why. And you know why, God. I'm calling on the one that we trust, Lord, to meet every need, to wash over, oh Lord, with ways of mercy, God. What the enemy has tried to destroy, Lord, raise it up, restore sevenfold, oh God. Do the miraculous, oh Lord. I claim it, oh God. I claim victory. I claim provision. I claim your presence. I claim the joy of the Lord that is their strength. I claim healing. I claim protection, oh God. Make a way out of no way, oh Lord. Do it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare this thing. I don't know how we're going to do this and be socially distant. But I do ask you to be mindful if you're standing next to a family member. Then it's okay, I guess, for you to lay hands on the shoulder. If you're standing next to somebody else, why don't you at least just turn toward them? We're going to pray. We're going to believe. There's somebody in this building you've not been baptized in the mighty saving name of Jesus. Uh, there are people down to my right and your left waiting uh, to help you be baptized. This is your day. But would you gather with somebody? I don't need a now I lay me down to sleep prayer and a God is great and God is good prayer. I need a storm rebuking prayer right now. When you lift your voice and begin to pray for a family member or somebody else, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, roll back your Lord. Uh, roll, Jordan, roll back, Lord. Uh, Oh, take that affliction, take that trouble, take that trial. Take that away in your mighty name, oh Lord. Let your glory, let your might, God, let it be on display right now, Lord. I call heaven alive. I call Christ alive. I believe right now according to your favor, God. You've got your things in store. 